Welcome to Bigfoot Society. If you have Bigfoot activity to report from the same areas discussed in this episode, please reach out to me directly after this episode. And if you'd like to be on the podcast to discuss a personal Bigfoot encounter, please reach out to me directly at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Do you wish there was more Bigfoot Society to listen to every week? Well, there is now. If you become a supporting member over at Patreon, you get a special members-only episode every single week on Wednesdays and sometimes even more episodes. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. And now let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, thanks for coming back to another episode. I've got the privilege of talking to a new friend, Mr. Brian Garvey tonight. How's it going, Brian? Very good, Jeremiah. Good to be here, man. Awesome. Awesome. So Brian, you are a New Hampshire based outdoorsman and hiker, correct? Yes. Yeah. Since 2018, I've been hiking. Oh, that's so, awesome. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that. I know you've got a, a friend that goes hiking with you as well. And I'd like to hear all about that. Uh, Chewy, you want to Yeah, hear totally. Oh, ah, okay. Well, this started... 2018, I, I, in 2015, I should jump back to that. I, I started getting into exercising and wanting to lose weight. And I'm always looking for that extra, just that next activity to do. And because you, you kind of get, you get tired of running, you get tired of going to the gym. I want something outside that, that I love to do. And I came across in 2018, I, my uh, girlfriend, now wife, um, took me to Mount Washington. Now, Mount Washington is located in northern New Hampshire. It's in the presidential range. It is the, the highest mountain in the northeast, 6,288 oh, 6, feet around there, roughly. Um, and I'm in the ballpark there. Um, Big des uh, tourist destination, uh, finding Bigfoot. And I believe it was one of their last seasons. They went to Mount Washington and did um, an episode on New Hampshire. And that was eye opening for me just because of what happened to me way back in 2003. It opened up my eyes and, and really got the the the, the the light bulb go off in my head of, of what's going on up there. Cause I just, I didn't know. Um, when, when I, the first thing I thought of Bigfoot was when I was a kid, uh, unsolved mysteries with Robert stack did an episode on Bigfoot. It was like, it was like the first, first or second season of that. And I was just, I was just a young kid and it was probably the first time I ever saw anything on, on Bigfoot. And when you when you when you see that 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 PG film, you, you, as a kid, you're you're in awe. Like like something in the Pacific Northwest that big can remain hidden for so long. So that that kind of got the. We're talking 2003. You know, I planned a trip. Um, it was a trip with my girlfriend and my son. And my son was five and a half at the time. <clears throat> So we wanted to do something special at the end of the summer. This was August of 2003. So he was going to be starting kindergarten. So he was five and a half. So kindergarten was starting a couple of weeks. We wanted to do something special. Now up in New Hampshire, in Glen, New Hampshire, they have this uh, this amusement park called Storylands. It's it's based for children. And 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 I, I never heard of it. I, I've never been to New Hampshire. Um, at the time, I was 23. Uh, so I'm like, oh, what a great idea. We could get out, go, go see what the mountains look like. It, it was great. It was beautiful. So we were going to spend two days, uh, two nights, three days, um, at a campsite in Glen, New Hampshire. Now, <clears throat> Glen, New Hampshire is, 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 it's in Northern New Hampshire. It's right past the presidential range, Mount Washington. So <clears throat> first night went great. Spent the whole next day at the park. Um, Came back to that day, tired, uh, set up the camp, you know, had the campfire going and they went to bed early because it was, it was a long day. Uh, I stayed up till, till it was time to go to bed. You have to put the campfire out at a certain time. Uh, so around 10 o'clock, I put the campfire out, went to bed. Now for me, 
uh, and still to this day, when I hike and do overnights, I, I can't, I, I have issues falling asleep in a tent. I, I just, I can't sleep on my back. I am constantly a tosser and a turner. I know, like when I go on these big hikes, I know I'm not going to sleep. I'm just going to toss and turn and I, I suffer. I'll suffer, but I'll suffer because of my love for the mountains. Like I will get up and I'll hike the next morning. So that night I'm just laying in the tent and I, it was hours, hours I was laying there and I'm almost, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting mad. I'm getting aggravated because I know the next day, like we have this big drive coming up, like a four hour drive home. And I'm like, I got to go to sleep. Now the campsite, like the campground we had, it was right on the bend of this, of this brook. And it was probably like nine, 10 feet wide where we were, the, the brook. And it was fast flowing water. So, you know, it was something you could rock hop across because there were boulders, but it was nothing I, I didn't want my son to get next to because of the, you know, for, for his age and the way the water was moving. I'm like, you can't go next to this because on the other side, it was just wilderness. So we were on the out, like right on the edge of the, where the campground ended. So that night, I'm just, I'm listening, I'm, I'm laying there, I'm listening to the water, you know, I'm listening to all the crickets, you know, you hear like little mice, you know, the little mice going through the leaves, you know, I'm listening to that. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I have to go to sleep. So I'm just laying there on my back, looking up. All of a sudden, I hear this impression stop going across the tent. Now, at first, like when I heard it, it, it scared me. It, it scared the crap out of me because I'm like, who is this jerk messing with me and my family in the middle of the night? I thought it was, you know, I'm thinking it's a person just messing with us like a drunk camper messing with me, putting his hand across my tent. So you know how nylon is loud when you, a tent is loud when you rub against it. And that's what startled me. But I was able to pick up the impression of the hand probably by the door of the tent. Now, this tent was a big tent. It was like an eight-person tent. It's one you could stand up and walk around in. So we had all our stuff on one side of the tent. I was in the middle. It was my girlfriend and my son on the end of the tent. So my feet were at the door of the tent. So when I saw the impression above the tent because I could see, you know, like I could see the digits going across and I'm like, I go up on my elbows and I'm watching. I'm about to get up. <laughs> I'm about to get up and I'm about to open the tent. I'm going to see who is this jerk messing with me? Who is this jerk trying to scare me in the middle of the night? So as it made it across the tent, I'm going to unzip my, my sleeping bag. And as soon as I start to do that, I hear a growl. I hear this, this growl. It was the deepest growl I, I have ever heard. I have ever heard in my life. It went from a growl, a guttural growl to a grunt. And when that, when it did that grunt, man, it, my, my earlobes vibrated. Like it vibrated my body to where I, I dropped right back down. I dropped right back down. I put the frigging pillow over my head and I just, I was so confused. I went from being angry and mad to want to confront this person to be like, after I heard that grunt, I'm like, that's not a person. A person, a person cannot do what I heard. And it was with such ease. It was just, it went from a, I heard the breath the breath to the growl to the grunt. So it was just seconds. You know what I mean? It was just seconds. But I, I was, I was so, I was so confused. Just, I, I was confused. I was scared. And I just, I, I just, I fell right back down. I put the pillow over my head and I just, I waited. I waited. I was so scared because I, I, I didn't know what, what could do that. So my first motion was like, I'm going to turn and I'm going to look, I'm going to see if it woke up my, my girlfriend. And they, they are heavy sleepers. They were sound asleep. Now people ask me like, well, was it loud? And it wasn't a loud, it wasn't a scream. It was just a very deep guttural growl to a grunt. 
And it, it, it blew my mind that it could vibrate me like that because that's never happened to me before. The closest thing I could compare it to is going to a concert. You get to that front row in front of a speaker and you got that guy on the bass and it's rattling through you. That's the closest I can, I can tell someone what that feels like. And after that happened, like, like I told you, I was listening to the crickets. I was listening to all the little animals after that grunt, after that vibration, it, it, it went dead silent. There were no crickets. It was dead silent where I couldn't, I couldn't, I I didn't, I could, I, I couldn't move. And I don't know if I couldn't move from the fear or if it was from that, that rattle in my chest, that vibration, it it was something that I, it was, it, it confused me so much. They stayed sound asleep. They were sound asleep. Now, after that all happened and, and it went silent, I just laid there. I laid there and I couldn't move. I just, I, I didn't want to move. I didn't want whatever it was. I didn't want it to know I was up. I didn't want it to come back. Uh, I'm thinking of the direction it was going. It was going in the direction. And if it came back, my son was on the end of that tent. I'm thinking about that. I'm, this is all running through my head. I'm thinking about, I don't want this thing coming back. I, I, you know, I'm trying to think of animals. What animals could do that? Because that's my first instinct. Bigfoot was not, not even in my mind. I, it was nothing I thought about at the time. It was, it was, it wasn't even a thought. I thought it was in the Pacific Northwest. I'm like, if there's one, there's one in the Pacific Northwest, that's, right. <laughs> that's what I thought. It, it was just, it was, it blew my mind. It, it just, it blew my mind to where I, I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel safe till it started getting light out. And I finally was like, Like I finally had that sense of relief, like the birds started chirping and I finally felt, I felt safe. I'm like, whatever animal that was is definitely gone by now because it's been hours. It was hours I was laying there. And I remember that morning, I was so close to just, I was so close to saying something to to my girlfriend, but I didn't want her to say, oh, it was just a person. Because it wasn't a person. A a person cannot do what I felt with that vocal. There's no way. It was an effortless grunt. And it was was so deep. So uh, I remember after that, like I got out, I went outside the tent that morning. Now I'm on no sleep. I'm on no sleep. I didn't know what to look around for. You know, I wasn't sure, but we were rookie campers. You know, my coolers were out. Like our everything was out. Our marshmallows, our marshmallow sticks didn't touch it. Nothing was touched. Nothing was moved. And I was so confused. Like I'm even looking on the ground we were on. It was a hard gravelly kind of hard dirt, hard gravel. I looked around for like, I, I, I first thought bear. Because I couldn't, I, I had, I couldn't think of any other big animal in the, in, New, in New Hampshire that could do what what, what happened. And then I'm, I'm I'm really I'm starting to think about it. I'm like, this a bear is not going to stand up on a time legs, run its paw across my tent, right? Without putting a friggin' hole in it with its claws, like it, it, it baffled me. I'm like, there's no yeah. way a bear is going to make that that vibration. Like I've never heard of a bear doing that. And it, it, it bothered me it, it, the whole ride home. I was just so close to just saying something, but I, I, it was, I kept it to myself. Now I kept this to myself for 18 years. I told nobody, nobody. It was just a heavy weight that was on my shoulders for all these years of just not knowing. Now I remember for, for a couple of days after we got back, I had such a hard time going to sleep because it was all I was thinking about. 
to where I finally said, Brian, I just forget it, man. Like, just forget it. Like, you're safe. Nothing happened. Your family's fine. Just forget it, man. Like, you, you don't know what it was. So for years, years, man, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know until Monster Quest comes out, 2008, wow. 2009. So we're talking five, six years. I, I had this, this weight on me. And when they talked about the John Mayanzinski tent encounter, now I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about that. He was messed with in his tent. Now, he just did an interview about a year ago on, a, on another podcast where he went into great detail, great detail on what happened. His tent was wrecked. His tent was wrecked. It was pushing down on it. And, and he saw the silhouette, though. He saw the silhouette when he got out of the tent in the, in, the, in the tree line. That got the ball rolling in my head. And then Monster Quest does uh, one in New York, does the White Hall. They did a New York episode. They're talking about the guy that felt the vibration that even his pant leg, vi like he, he felt the vibrations in his leg and it just, everything, everything came rushing back to that night in the tent for me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like, maybe that's what happened to me that night. Cause I, I was, I, I still didn't have any answers to what happened that, that, that night. And when I heard that, the wheels stopped going in my head. And I'm like, oh, wow. But I still, I still didn't, wasn't for sure. I didn't tell. I still, I, it was something I still just kept to myself. Then finding Bigfoot, like we just said earlier, goes to what? Goes to New Hampshire. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I got to watch this. Like, I, I got to watch this. I got to see what they say. Cause I'm not going to knock finding Bigfoot. I, it was a great, it was an eye-opening show for a lot of people to show what is really going on. I loved when they talked about the town hall meetings. I loved when they talked about people's encounters and going to the sites and showing where the encounter happened. And one of the guys they had on was a guy that was camping out in his tent on Cherry Mountain. Now, this Cherry Mountain is right next to Mount Washington. <laughs> which is right next to where I was camping. So I'm starting to connect the dots. I'm starting to connect the dots. Uh, I'm finally, I think I'm finally getting some answers to what happened to me that night. So when he told, said that he was getting, he was getting sticks, branches, rocks thrown at his tent until he was scared off the mountain. He was scared off the mountain. Something scared him off the mountain. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like that. I'm like, I, I think I, I, I had a similar thing happen. It, was, it wasn't rocks thrown against my tent, but it was finger. Like, I, you know, I, it's been 20 years. It'll be 20 years this August that tent encounter happened. It feels like it just happened yesterday, man. Like I can just, I can just look, I can just close my eyes and I can just picture the, the, the impressions going across, man. And, and then the, the power the, of the vocal is just, it's something I've had some, some, I've had a few traumatic things happen to me, but the one I think about the most, the one I think about every day is that night in the tent, man, because I, I have not, since this has happened, I have not been able to camp alone. I can't, I, I can't camp alone i can't go out in the tent by myself you know me and my dog chewy he is on every adventure with me out in the mountains and i i need to go to a tent site they have these tent sites in the white mountain national forest that you can stay in um you pay the you pay the caretaker a fee it's like 15 bucks a night you get a little tent platform but there are other hikers there I, I am fine with that. I can, I can, I can camp with other people. I can stay out with other people alone in my tent, but if I am out there, I can't do it. I, I, I have chickened out twice trying to you know, stealth camp on one of these hikes. I, and I'm just like, no, just go, just go to the tent site, man. Like I, I wasn't ready. I, I, I haven't been ready to do that until this year. I am finally going to try to do that. Um, but we'll get into that story a little later. Uh, 
So that was like 2015, 2016. It was one of finding Bigfoot's last seasons when I heard this. So for me, since then, 2018, I started getting into hiking. I, I did my first mountain, which I said before, Mount Washington with my girlfriend. And I instantly, I instantly fell in love with mountain hiking. I, I, I love the, the, the quiet. I love the solitude. I'm one of those hikers. If I have the trail to myself, like, and I have a mountain peak to myself, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's my lottery. That's my mm-hmm. goal. Yeah, uh, there's, there's nothing more that I like than having that to myself. So for me, it's the solitude of the mountains. It's it's the the reward at the end with the epic views. Um, so 2018, I, I'm going on this big hike. Like after that, Mount Washington, I had to look up. I'm like, what other mountains can I do in that area? So I find out there's this list called the New Hampshire 48. Now, the New Hampshire 48 is 48 4,000 foot peaks in New Hampshire that you can, you know, just do as a get your little reward and get a little patch at the end when you finish, you know. I'm like, oh, that is great. That's something I could do with my dog. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to document every hike. So I have a GoPro for me. And now I have a GoPro for my dog, Chewy. So (laughs) I put a GoPro on him. I got a GoPro and I'm just, I'm vlogging as I'm hiking. I, I'm, you know, I, it's not, I don't have it on constantly, but clips of just perfect views and where I'm at and what I'm doing. And we've been doing that for, it's so oh, five years now, but oh, wow. yeah. So we finished, we finished the 48 in 2021. Um, but now I've I've gone on to you know hiking Vermont and Maine and and all up in these 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 areas that there's not a lot of people. You're talking Maine is the is like the f- percentage wise most forested state in America, like forest of population. Absolutely, yeah. And along with Vermont and New Hampshire, those 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 if you want if you want solitude. <laughs> and you want you want to go hike and and be and and be in a quiet area where there's not a lot of rural or a lot of people. That's where you want to go. New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine. So, 2018, we're doing this big hike. Now, it, it, this this hike is is called the Pemi Loop. Now, they call it the Pemi Loop because you're in this section of the White Mountain National Forest. This White Mountain National Forest is 800,000 acres of protected forest it's a massive that's that's massive like you it's mind-blowing it's it's a lot of land and you have these pockets here and there in new hampshire where it's just protected forest there's maybe one trail going in you might have a trail a few miles away but it's just you and that trail in rugged wilderness now the one thing i want to say about the how rugged it is in, in, in New Hampshire. I mean, they don't call it the granite state for nothing. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, old, yeah. it's granite, it's rock. I mean, your, your feet, if doing a big hike, you're, you, by the end of that hike, your feet are junk. You know, you're carrying a big multi-day pack, like a 40 pound pack over mountain peaks. Now this, this Pemajawasset, it's a big 31.5 mile hike over 13 mountain peaks. Some people do it in like a day. The nuts, the runners, those, those marathon, like those, those, you know, ultra marathon people will jog it slowly and it will take them like 16 hours. We do it in a day and a half. We're, we're pretty fast hikers, me and Chewy, but we'll do an overnight. We'll stay at a, at a campsite and then we'll finish it the next day. So I'm on my way up this, this trail. Now, this, now, this section of the Pemajawasset Wilderness, it's 46,000 acres of the 800,000 acres of the White Mountains. It's the biggest area of the White Mountains in one area because it's broken up through the state, the White Mountains. So we're on this trek. I'm like, we're going to bang out 12, 13 peaks. I'm like, this is great. So we're on our way up. Now, to go into this this area you have to 
you go into the Lincoln Woods now. This Lincoln Woods, there's this bridge you walk across. And once you walk over that bridge, over that Pemi, that Pemi River, it's just you in the wilderness. There's no cars that can get in. There's nothing. It's just pure solitude. Now, this Lincoln, this Lincoln, this Lincoln Trail, this Lincoln Woods Trail, it breaks up to this Lincoln Brook Trail and Franconia Brook Trail. We're taking the Franconia Brook Trail up to the one section to go to do a, a whole full circle of the mountains because the mountains, it's like 12 mountains in a big circle. And in the middle is the Pemi Wilderness. It's just where no one goes. Nobody goes. You know what I mean? There's no trail going right through it. So it's 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 forest that there's not there's some people there's places that people haven't even gone in there. You know what I mean? Oh, so, abs- absolutely, man. It's yeah. You know, I grew up in um in western Massachusetts in a town called Northfield. Oh yeah. Um, and so my father was big into the outdoors and. I hiked all of Connecticut in uh, Massachusetts on the Appalachian trail with him over the years. And uh, I know exactly these areas you're talking about in New Hampshire and listeners need to know this is nothing to mess with at all. Uh, this area that Brian is talking about is uh, life or death type stuff. And, and Absolutely. Un- yeah, unfortunately, that there have been a lot of deaths on yeah. Mount Washington. Oh yeah, uh, they they have a list up when you get on the peak. You go into the conservatory, and they have a list of all the people that died. And even just in the White Mountains alone, uh, we had I think four deaths this year. Of uh, you know, you could be at the bottom. You could be mm-hmm. at the bottom of the parking lot. You could be in shorts and a t-shirt. It'd be you know high fifties. You get up into the 5,000 foot elevation range, it could be a whiteout. It's game the, over, yeah. The, the weather changes on a dime up there. And if you're not prepared and you venture off trail just a little bit and you and you get lost, it, it, it's going to be very hard to find you because you don't have cell service up there. Um, if you don't have, if you're not prepared with like a beacon or I carry a Garmin with me, I carry a satellite phone just in case. Yeah. Um, unfortunately we had a 19 year old pass away this year. You know, Mm -hmm. she, she was trying to finish her 48 and she she had like eight mountains left and she just, she just lost her way on, on a place I've been a few times and it's easy to miss where you're going to go and end up in a gully and then you're, you're lost. And, and it, unfortunately she, she died on her birthday. So it, it, it's stuff that happens in there. If you're not, it's just a lack of preparation. And like you said, it's, it's nothing to mess with once because you could go four or five yards off trail. And sometimes you have trouble finding that trail again. It's happened to me a few times and I am so lucky. I carry a Garmin that has the map, that has the satellite map and I can get back on trail because there's been a few times where I'm like, Oh no. Like I'm, I'm off trail, so we're going up this 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 Lincoln Brook Trail. Now you're pretty much following brooks for miles on these on these trails, and you're in a ravine, uh, the ravine in between these mountains. And I'm going up this trail, and it was in July we're doing this hike. Um, some of these t- some of these trails you're in very very. Uh, it's like you're going in a tunnel, you know, it's the, beautiful, foliage, yeah. the foliage yeah. is so thick. It's almost like you're in a tube of a wave. It's mm-hmm. just that thick. I'm walking. I'm la da It's This is my second time filming. Okay. With a GoPro. And I'm just going along. I got Chewy on the side of me. And as I'm walking on this trail, about nine feet up from me, this branch shakes. Now, <laughs> It scared the crap out of me. As soon as I saw it out of the corner of my eye shake, I just did a 180, man. And I go back about 30, 40 yards, okay? I gather myself and I got my GoPro out. And when that happened, everything from 2003 
just rushes back to me. Mm. That, that, that feeling of being scared stiff. It just, that, that it brought back that night, the 10 to where I was so confused. I was so scared. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, I'm going to see it. Like, I'm going to see this thing. I'm finally going to see it. Like I'm getting my answers. I'm waiting for like two minutes, man. Two minutes. I got the GoPro going. <laughs> just standing there just with the GoPro. Chewing oh on the side of me. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm still seeing the rustling. And I'm like, oh, my God. All of a sudden, this big friggin' moose <laughs> comes out onto the trail. That's, I, sc- that's scary, though, dude. That's People don't understand how scary that is. And it wasn't a little moose. No. <laughs> No. This thing had a full rack. First oh, time I've seen a moose goodness. like in in real life, besides on TV. This is the first time I've seen a moose. <laughs> I went from like pure, like almost glad because of what I thought it was, because I was scared, man, to almost like, oh my God. I'm like, is this thing gonna charge me? I'm like, they I'm do, gonna- yeah. I have no weapon. I carry a tactical knife. I don't have a gun. Uh, This thing is just out on the trail and just eating the vegetation. So that's what it was doing when I saw the branch shake. But I couldn't see a thing. That's how thick the vegetation is. So when people say, oh, how come like a Sasquatch, how come, you know, something eight feet tall, uh, you can't, you know, you can't see it. Dude. (laughs) Go into the White Mountain National Forest. Go when it's full foliage. You can't Mm -hmm. see three, five yards in. You can't see. I couldn't see a freaking 1,200 pound moose. I couldn't see it until it came out onto the trail. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm I'm there scared. I'm still filming the thing. Now, (laughs) I look down at my dog. Now, what I have to say about Chewy, because it comes into a factor later on what's happening to us out there. Any squirrel, chipmunk, uh, deer, anything deer and lower, he's going to chase. He's going to beeline it and he will chase. I will scream at the top of my lungs, Chewy! <laughs> there is no, he, he, he's just, it's like a shark. It's like a shark sensing blood. Right. He just goes. Oh, wow. And uh, he was more scared than I was when that moose popped out. Like yeah. he didn't, he did not want to move. I was on that trail, man, for three or four minutes, <laughs> not moving, waiting for that moose to get off the trail so I could keep going. The thing is, I had to drag Chewy. Now, he has a harness on him. And so I am dragging him to get by this moose, which was probably by the time I got by the moose, it was probably about 15 yards in. But I'm like, this is my chance. This is my chance to get by this moose. So after all that happened, my adrenaline is crazy. It's just mm. my heart is like, pa, 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 pa. I was so thankful nothing happened. Like, I don't know anything about moose, like the rut, you know, like I didn't know. Like, Oh, you this, didn't know anything about moose during I this? Didn't, oh my goodness, no, Brian. So that's, didn't, that's horrifying. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, like, I'm not going to make noise to go hide behind a tree because it's just going to knock that freaking tree right down coming at me. Yeah, I just, well, I yeah. st- Stood yeah. there still, still, still. I was so scared. Oh man. So after that happened, all I could think about, all I could think about was that night in the tent and what happened to me that night. Mm. It brought back that fear, that that fear of being scared stiff to where I'm like, oh I'm like, I remember when I finished that hike, man, as soon as I got home, I was never a YouTube guy. You know, I was never a tech guy. Um, I didn't start watching YouTube till 2018. I, I never got into it. So I'm like, I got to find answers. I got to find answers to what happened to me that night. You know, because the shows gave me, you know, like I said, the light bulb went off a little bit with, with those monster quests and, and, and finding Bigfoot. It, right. it got thinking about that. So I go home. And I put in New Hampshire Sasquatch and 
Coas County Wood Devil pops up. I'm like, oh, not good. Bad. I'm glad we're going here because I was like, I'm going to I'm really curious if if he's gone here before. I'm glad no, you're bringing when, this up. Dude, when that popped up, I'm oh, like, man. no, 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 no. I'm like, Sasquatch. Little did I know back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when there were encounters back then, they didn't call them what we call them now. They called them wood devils, yeah. wood devils and hairy men. And I, that sent me, dude, if anyone knows who gets into this Sasquatch realm, you go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I went down that rabbit hole, man. And I was just Sasquatch Chronicles pops up. Oh Never yeah. yeah. Sasquatch Chronicles didn't know what it was. Oh wow. Yeah. And then I saw, listened to a couple episodes. I was hooked. Mm-hmm. I was hooked. I was listening to it at work all day. I had my earbuds in. I'm listening to Sasquatch Chronicles episodes. I went all the way back to episode one and I just listened to all of them all. And then I'm hearing, I'm hearing all these similar encounters. I'm hearing mm-hmm. these, these tent encounters in New Hampshire. I'm hearing a woman's tent encounter in her yard in New Hampshire, camping with her kids, where they, she, a juvenile Sasquatch was running and, and, and went along their tent and rubbed across their tent. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, uh, the, the, I was like, it's happened to other people. But I'm finally getting these answers. So, wow. so that was 2018 that happened. And I, it didn't, it didn't, you know, uh, I still didn't say anything to anyone because I, it's very taboo up here in the Northeast. Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. And that is a big problem up here. Mm-hmm. You don't hear a lot of, you don't hear a lot of account. People don't tell what's going on. For one, a lot of it happens on private lands. Like I've talked with Alex Petikoff and, and another buddy of mine, Evan. He goes by New Hampshire Sasquatch. He's another guy that collects. Yep, yep. Um, he collects eyewitness data on encounters and, and they've collaborated together, him and Alex. And they have a map of these cluster areas in New Hampshire where there are these, these encounters and sightings. And it just, it, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. And like I said, I'm doing a lot of these hikes in this wilderness. And this one hike comes up. Um, this hike is called Owl's Head. Now, oh, that sounds really familiar. This Owl's Head is in the Pemi Jawasset wilderness. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is a... Uh, a 17.2 mile hike. You're going just to get to the base of the mountain. You're going eight miles into the wilderness. So I'm taking that same route. Like I said, I took the Lincoln Brook trail on that, on that Pemi loop. And the other trail, when you veer off to the left is the Franconia Brook trail. Oh, yep. So I'm on that Franconia Brook trail going up to this, uh, Going up to this owl's head. Now, this owl's head, this was number 43 for us on the New Hampshire 48. So I was getting close to the end. I was doing a lot of hiking around that time. Uh, 2019, I really started really just every other week. And I am just going and I'm banging out mountains and I'm banging out mountains. This is the one no one wants to do because let alone it's a 17.2 out and back hike but it's a viewless peak. There is nothing to look at at the top. So it's, it's one of those like, ugh, like let's just get it out of the way. Now it's turned out to be one of my favorite hikes because of what's happened. But (laughs) so we're, we're on this, 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 this Franconi Brook trail and I'm about three and a half miles in you come to this. uh, It's a pond. It's called black pond. So I take this, it's a bushwhack I could take to save me like 0.2 miles. It was 0.4 miles total to save to do this Jeez, bushwhack. Brian, that's the start <laughs> to a really bad story. Okay, so I'm going to bushwhack in the middle of the Pemi wilderness. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly, okay. it's a trail that a lot of people use, but they don't okay. paint it well. So you, you do have the foot traffic to where you can follow it pretty, okay. pretty well. But 
I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous area. I'll send you a picture of it. It's it's a beautiful area. It's a pond in the middle of nowhere, like glass. You know, it's like looking at glass and you get the mountains coming, you know, the mountains in the background and you get the mountains on the water. Just a beautiful area. I'm like, oh, what a perfect spot for me and Chewy to have a water break. Say where I'm at with my GoPro and stuff and what we're doing. And we'll just get back on this bushwhack. So now when I'm on these hikes, like uh, Sasquatch is not on my mind 24 seven. Like I'll listen to a I'll listen to a podcast on the way up. You know what I mean? I'll listen to a story on the way mm-hmm. up. But it's, it's once you get into that mode of hiking, it's, it's I'm not thinking about that stuff, you know? So we're about halfway down, halfway done with this, this bushwhack. And uh, I'm just going la di da. Now, what I want people to know is like, I'm not filming constantly. Anyone that has a GoPro, those batteries do not last, you know? So I'm just, I am doing highlights of the hike. Like a few minutes here, I'll, I'll say what I'm doing. A few minutes there, you know, I'll turn Chewy's on when we're at like a peak. I'll put Chewy's GoPro on and get his point of view. So we're on this path. And all of a sudden, I hear this. Whap, 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 whap. Six of them. Six of them to where my eyes were flinching. I was flinching. It was that loud off to my right. Like 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 someone banging a hammer and you don't know they're going to bang the hammer and you're next to them and you're like, you like that? You like flinching? Yeah. I was so confused. The first thing I thought of was woodpecker. You know, you, you first, you think of the first animal that can do that, that is, that comes to your mind. I first thought woodpecker and I'm like, like that can't be a woodpecker. That's it's not really, enough to make you flinch like that though. It's way too loud. It's way yeah. too hard. It was very hard and fast and just six of them. 12 to 15 seconds go by and I get six knocks to my left, a little further away, a little further away. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, it just happened over there, but a little further away. 12 to 15 seconds later, I get six knocks way off to the front of me. At that time, I pop on my GoPro. I pop it on. I just heard knocks in three different directions. I'm saying what's going on. I'm so used to doing it on my hikes that it's, to me, it's like my my GoPro, I'm talking to a person. That is like my safety valve. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here by myself. You know, I'm going out to these places. It's just me and the dog. So that's kind of my lifeline. I kind of look at it. So I'm saying what's going on. I mean, I'm f bombing. I, I have it all. I have it all on my. I have it all on camera. You know what I mean? And I'm saying what happened, and and I was just so I was so confused, and I was like, oh my god. I'm like, I'm hearing knocks in three different directions. Six, six, and six. I'm like, that's that's. It's not an echo. I'm like, it's not an echo. So I do my thing. I'm walking on the trail. It was a few minutes. I have the GoPro going. So I put Chewy's GoPro on and I'm like, I got to see, I got to see if it happens again. I was in that area. I was probably like, it was like 10, 15 minutes. I'm going, I'm just, I'm kind of pacing back and forth, man. I'm pacing back and forth. I'm looking around and it's quiet. You know, you hear the occasional bird, you know, but it's just quiet. I'm watching my dog. I'm seeing how he's acting and he's sniffing around and kind of looking around, but he's not on that high alert. So I kind of was like, Oh, I'm like, okay. So I like, say my GoPro. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to keep on going. Shut my GoPro off, dude. <laughs> 10 seconds later, six knocks again to my right. Oh man. I was like, I, I was so, afraid and confused because it's never, I I didn't put any stock into the knocks ever in these stories where I hear these guys banging on trees. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I'm like, come on. Like you're banging on trees. Mm. I, until it happened to me. And of course in the back, I'm starting to think Sasquatch Mm. after the six knocks, three knocks to my left, same distance, a little further away as the, as the, the, the ones prior. And right at that moment, I felt like I was in a crossfire of communication 
That's, mm. that's what it felt like at the time. And I, I was so, I wanted to see what was doing it because the ones to my right were the closest. And those were the ones that kept going first before the rounds again. But after the three to the left, three to the freaking front of me, the ones that were far away, it happened again, three. So six, three, three on that second round of knocks. Man. GoPro goes back on. I'm like, it just effing happened again. Now, anyone that wants to watch this, I put it up on my channel. Like it's just raw and unedited and me. Oh yeah. No, it's going to definitely be in the show notes. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a required watch for sure. I sent you a few things. Yeah. That's one of them. That was one of them. And I, I got so scared because I don't know what those knocks mean, man. I do. Oh, that's the thing. No one does. Right. No. So when I see these guys knocking, I'm like, what are you doing? (sighs) You don't know what that means. Yeah, man going out with guys that, that like to knock you know and i get scared when they knock because i'm like dude you don't know what that means man like you can you can have as much fun as you want banging on that but you don't know because when i'm going out on like these researching you know investigations with alex and and stuff i'm not a knocker man i am one of those okay. guys who want to sit and be quiet and just let nature come to me you know what i mean um, let, let them, let their curiosity come check me out. Don't, I don't want to, I'm not swinging anything, man. Cause I don't know what that means. Mm. Well, as all this is going on, I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, I gotta call Alex. I'm like, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. I, I didn't know who to talk to and uh, I'm going to skip back a minute because okay. The first time I, I came out with my story of what happened to me in that tent, um, it was like a month after my dad died. Oh, I was yeah. I was in such an emotional state. That was December of 2020. Oh, wow. And mm. after that happened, uh, I'm thinking about this heavy weight that's been on me with this, this, this tent thing, because I kind of had a clue what it was. Um, but I still haven't told anyone. And, and, and I remember going on a winter hike and I I was just so ready to just, I needed to just, I needed to just say it. So I had my GoPro. I just started filming myself as I'm hiking on this winter hike about what happened to me in that tent. And it was like a 16, 17 minute video of me. Just, it was my first time ever it coming out of my mouth. Mm. And I felt so good after finally saying it even if it was just to the camera man it it felt so good to say it but it was something that i sat on i sat on it for a month i didn't post it on my channel i waited because i didn't want like i was saying it's very taboo up here i didn't want i didn't want to get that look I didn't want to get that look of like oh this guy's freaking crazy you know like he's spewing this crap he doesn't know I didn't want that for my family. You know what I mean? I didn't want that. I didn't want to be let down. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want that negative feedback from it. You know what I mean? Oh, I get it. Cause I grew up first 20 years of my life were in new England. And it's like, it, it's a lot of, there's an unwritten thing where it's like, you just shut your mouth and yeah. and you, if you're the you're not the guy that starts talking about stuff and i wasn't into bigfoot back then but it's like i heard maybe one thing growing up about something weird and it was like about koi dogs it wasn't bigfoot yeah. it was old timers on a porch talking about koi dogs if you get yeah. that but i totally am with you man like in that area of the u.s you just you usually don't open your mouth about this. You stuff. don't. And, and, and especially, to, you don't, like I said, you don't want to, you know, I don't want to tell my, you know, like my mother or my girlfriend and have a look at me like, like that. Give me that look. I didn't want to be let down. Mm. So when I, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I'm going to upload it onto my channel and yeah. I'm going to see if someone will reach out to me to see what. To, to see if I could have someone to talk to about it. So I put it out and then I finally, I shared it on social media. I put it on uh, 
the Sasquatch Chronicles fan page on you on Facebook. Oh, he's solid. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got this outpour of comments, I bet. positive comments that I was like, Oh, it felt so good. Finally to have other people share their stories with me that I've had something similar happen with feeling the vocals or people from New Hampshire that watch me and they're like, Oh my God, like I didn't even know what was going on up here. Like people, like I, I was like, mm. Oh, like it was such a weight being lifted off my shoulders after 17 years of not telling anyone. So I get this instant message from a guy I didn't know. And he's like, Hey man, he's like, I just saw your, your, uh, your post on uh, Sasquatch Chronicles. He's like, I'm from New Hampshire. He's like, I make a lot of documentaries, uh, mostly on cryptids. He's like, I do a lot of local stuff. Uh, he's like, if you ever want, he's like, if I, if you could, uh, you know, fill out uh, this information, like an encounter, so he could keep a record of it. And I was like, oh, sure, man. Yeah, I could do that. But first, I wanted to look him up. I wanted to see who this guy was because I'm not, I don't want to be ridiculed. I don't want to, I don't want to be like, like it's a trick. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting bamboozled or anything, you know? I'm like Alexander Petikoff. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> sounds, sounds weird to me. <laughs> right? So I'm looking at him. I see his profile with his camera and he's, you know, and he's, and I look at his stuff. He's like, yeah, I'm a local doc. You know, he's like, I make a lot of documentaries. And I was like, oh, wow. So I looked at all his stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. He is legit. Like he really wants to know. And ever since that day, like we, we, we had that connection. Mm with the mountain hiking because he's done the, the New Hampshire 48 as well. And I was like, oh, wow, finally someone I could talk to about this. And of course, everyone now in the YouTube world who list, follows the Sasquatch, you know, rabbit hole knows who Alexander Petikoff is now. I would hope that everyone listening knows who Alex Petikoff I is. Hope and so. if you don't, you really then, need then to. Bye bye. I'm going to have a few <laughs> links in the show notes just in case that one person doesn't know. Oh, we yeah. can make that difference. So, yeah. And, and yeah, because uh, there's, there's something me and Evan found, you know, last year where we had to call Alex for help on this and it ended up oh, being yeah. a small group of monsters. He ended up doing a Beyond the Trail episode on what we found. So, but we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. Um. So I I, I talked to him and he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, I have this uh this Sasquatch uh out of the shadows YouTube channel. That's you know before that's before he hit like the let's call him the celebrity in the Sasquatch. You know. <laughs> yeah, people <laughs> might not real. So it that's true. People might not. Re- realize that he has an amazing YouTube channel with some of the best Bigfoot themed interviews that exist yes. on YouTube. He does. And I'm like, counting from, everyone. Like, yeah. It, 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 it is a great, he, I mean, from Meldrum to breed, like he's had everyone on there and Alex is very articulate. He mm-hmm. is very good with his words. He's, he's great interviews. Great. Just a great guy all around. You know, I, I, I always tell him like, Alex, I just, you know, I just talked about you again. Like, you know, like, I'm like, I, nothing bad, buddy, you know, like, right. <laughs> but you know, I, I am so lucky that he reached out to me because uh, what a ride it's been since we've met. And mm. I'm so lucky to have him as a friend now. And man, what a, what a great guy. And, uh, yeah, anyone out there, I would, I would, yeah, go on to his. He's not on the Sasquatch. He doesn't do anything much with it anymore because of the STM. He he doesn't do anything on the Sasquatch right. out of the Shadows channel, but there's still all that great content. Like, oh, it's so good. Not, like, like his first documentaries, you know, like it's just really good stuff, just down to earth stuff. It's just like watching a Beyond the Trail app, pretty much. It, it really, it really is. Yeah, it really is. So. Uh, now we'll get since now I I said who I was texting while all this is going on. Right, I have no service out there when those knocks happened. Where we're, we are, we're four miles into this hike where there is nothing else out there, no service. But I am texting 
I, I, I must have been. It was so long. <laughs> I'm sending him everything that's going oh, so, on. So you're texting him without service. And then when you get back to yes. service, it's only to send it. Okay, I get yes. it. Yeah. That's okay. what I, right after everything happened, it, I was there for probably 15 minutes. I am just writing this whole story of what's going on. Finally, I get to the base of the mountain. After all this has happened, um, it finally goes through. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he's like, Wait a minute. What? And I'm like, Alex, I'm like, I'm in the penny wilderness, man. I'm like, I just had some crazy happen, man. <laughs> so I'm like, I will call you when I get home. I called him the next day. I called him the next day. And I told him what happened. He's like, dude, he's like, he's like, man, he's like, you know, if you want, Brian, he's like, why don't you come on to my show and tell your story of what's happened with you? And I was a little hesitant at first because, it, like I said, I, I've talked about it one time and I was to a camera. Like mm -hmm. I never talked with, with people, you know, with, with, to another person. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm getting all this positive feedback from my, from my post. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, oh, come on, man. So his podcast was the first podcast I really started to listen to, like the live streaming. Right. And he had, uh, and you know, one of the first ones I watched, he had Doug Highcheck on. I mean, he had Doug Highcheck on twice. So everyone, I really, oh, the information I got out of that, those two shows with Highcheck, oh my God. Oh, they're, that yeah, guy, they're good. Yeah. What a wealth of information. Like I was like, when I went on, I was like a kid in the candy store. I had so many questions in the live streams. I had so many questions and Doug was answering them all. And I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, I wish I could have found this sooner, but I am so thankful that I finally found this. So we started talking about, I'm like, maybe these, these Sasquatch have like some kind of scent gland because you hear some encounters, you smell nothing. And you have others where they they smell this stench. So I threw that question out there. And High Check was like, yeah. He's like, I believe these things do have like some kind of gland that they can mm -hmm. let out this stench, almost like a defense, like a skunk does as a defense mechanism. I was like, yes. I'm like, maybe, maybe. It could either or in the south, maybe they smell a little more because of the different temperatures, the humidity and, and up north, it's not as bad up here and you're in the higher elevation. So maybe that that's something because that night in the tent, man, I, I smelled nothing. I smelled mm. nothing. All yeah. I could smell that night was, you know, how the, the like I said, I was near running water, that wet smell, you know, that misty smell. Right. That's right. all I smelled that night, man. So, but that, that got, that was very interesting for what Mr. Hijack said, but you know, when I went on Alex's show and, and I started telling him, you know, what was going on and everything, um, I've had other stuff happen a week later. I'm on after all those knocks happened. And I did that, that hike. I'm like, I gotta get back out there. I have got to get back out there next weekend and i went back out into the same wilderness that same pemi wilderness um and i wanted to do you could do the pemi loop like i said it's a 31.5 mile total hike or you could do a wow. semi you could do a semi pemi loop you could do half of it because there's a trail that runs all the way up that 13 falls trail is what i took when i saw the moose you could keep taking that straight up and you could just cut that pemi loop in half and you just do half of it my goal was to go knock a couple more mountains that I didn't get. I'm like, I'm going to knock those two off, but I'm going to make my, I'm going to make it worth it and do the, do a semi Pemi loop. So I'm right back out there the next weekend, man. And what, wow. was great, what was great about this weekend, it was Memorial day weekend. Okay. It was the end, you know, and the, what was good was that it was the long weekend, but what sucked is the weather, the weather, I knew the next day on my day two hike was going to be 60% rain, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds by oh, June. So by noon, so I knew that next morning, I really had to hustle to get out of there. So I'm going back down and it's starting to rain, extremely windy. The good thing was that because the weather was so bad, there weren't a lot of people out. So 
like I said, I love when I have the trail to myself. Um, no matter what's happened, I still love it. We're going down this 13 Falls Trail again, and it's it's right near where I had the moose encounter, you know, two, three years prior, you know? And I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm, I'm going down this corridor of get that, 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 that tube of, of foliage. And when I'm getting to the end of these hikes, it's kind of when I'll stop. That's when I'll start looking around. You know what I mean? I'll watch my dog. I'll see how what he's looking at. You know, if he kind of perks up and looks, I'll look where he's looking, you know, because I, I know my dog so well. Right, right. And I'll know what he'll chase and what he won't chase. <laughs> so I know if it's anything bigger than a moose, he ain't, he's not moving. He's high. He's going to hide behind dad, you know? Yeah. So we're, we're at the tail end and it's raining on and off. And I'm walking and we're kind of in like this, this muddy area, very muddy from the rain. And there was kind of like a little swampy area. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking off the embankment and it was just this smooth as peanut butter, uh, like a, like a quick mud. It, it was a very big area. Um, and it was just so smooth, but there was just weird, like big circular impression in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's odd. I'm like, mm-hmm. what the heck was that? Because there was nothing else within 20 feet of it. It was just this perfect, like I said, smooth, smooth as ice. And with this, just this big, this big impression, circular impression in the middle. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, I'm going to try to get up and take a picture with my camera, with my mm-hmm. phone. Like, I'm going to go near the embankment. I'm not going into that quick mud because if I go into that quick mud, man, it's like that. Oh, you yeah, know, you're you done. Lift yeah. your boot up. You might lose your boot. Yeah. And I didn't want my dog. My dog follows me everywhere. I'm like, I right. don't want, he carries a pack. I don't want him going into the mud and getting it. Oh, I keep my video equipment, some of my stuff in his pack as well. So I could just hurry up and grab it. Yeah. So he's off to the side of me and I got this 40 pound pack. Now this is day two. This is two, two weeks in a row of long hikes. I did the, the, the owls had the week beef prior. That was 17.2. Now this one is over 20 miles. But I went over six peaks, so I am I am physically exhausted. Oh man! Like I, I remember at the end of this hike, even though I'm, I'm kind of looking around for tracks and just looking, at, like just being aware of my surroundings. Like I, I am just I am so fatigued. Like on this, I, I remember this was like the worst ending to one of my hikes because I am fighting, fighting every step is just like oh, and like I said, you're carrying this big pack, and it's just. Oh, I'm like, I still have another six miles, right. you know, at least yeah. I'm back onto the flat. So as I'm going out to get this, this photo of this, this just, it, to, it could have been anything. It could have been like an animal that fell from a tree branch and just right into the middle, you know, it was just around. And I wanted to just try to get a photo of it. Now, as I'm doing this off to the diagonal, like off to the right, I'm hearing bipedal footsteps it's like really oh. that's wild dude oh wow now i'm out in the middle of nowhere yeah you're way out there you're miles I'm away from everyone man six miles oh my away goodness now anyone that's listening to this right now i highly suggest go on google earth put in owl's head okay you're gonna see the lincoln brook trail and the franconia brook trail and you're going to see the Pemi Wilderness. You're going to see how far out I was on this Franconia Brook Trail. I am six miles away from my truck. Okay, the the only the closest trail to me was three miles way off to me to do the Owl's Head. At least three miles. So I'm like, who that? The first thing I'm like, who is walking off trail on a day like this in the middle of nowhere? As I'm hearing this, and I make a movement down to look, it stops. The the steps stop. I look over to my dog to see what he's doing. Now, like I said, when Chewie sees an animal, deer or loa, he's going to chase that frigging thing. Uh He is just staring to the direction I heard the steps and he's not moving, man. He is on high alert. 
and he is not moving. So what I start doing, I have the, like these, these uh, evergreens in front of me. And then there's like, there's, there's like a nice open area and then more trees scattered. I'm going like this. I'm rocking, looking in between the trees like this. See, I don't know why I started doing that. I think it was, I wanted to stay quiet. I didn't want to keep like pittering around. I wanted to see if I could see what was doing that. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm like, that's not a freaking person. Chewy is not a people person. If he sees a person, he's going to growl or he's going to be like, he, he's not, he's not going to run up to a human. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But he will growl at, at the person or someone's going to say, oh, hey, you know, could you put your dog on leash? Or if it was a human, you know what I mean? To just stop and not move anymore. So as all this is going on, I am frozen. Now, my dog is off leash. Okay. I want to bring up this encounter that uh, Evan told me about uh, because through, through me telling my story, Evan reached out because he heard what happened to me with the vocals and he had something similar happen to him with the vocals where he thought it, it felt like a cat was purring on his chest, on his, on his neck. That's oh, how that's he wild. was his vibration. So we had, me and Evan had that connection. And, and we, and when I came out with my story, we have become very close friends talking, for, you know, how it is when you talk with your Sasquatch buddies, you could talk. Oh yeah, no, buddies. totally. And I'm sure a lot of listeners get that. For sure. Yeah. I've talked to this guy for hours on yeah. all the encounters in New Hampshire that people don't want anyone else to know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. A lot because it's on private land. People yep. don't want to be messed yep. with. But he told me this one. It's on Instagram. I I highly recommend anyone that is interested in this story go to New Hampshire Sasquatch on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He puts out he 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 He'll put where the encounter was. He'll have a a, 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 a a picture of where the encounter was, you know, from Google Earth. And he'll have someone illustrate what happened, you know, like a drawing of what happened. So he's telling me about this one that happened on Mount Cabot. Now, Mount Cabot is the furthest 4,000 footer, the northernmost 4,000 footer in New Hampshire, because then you have Vermont and then you have Maine. So when you're up at that peak on Cabot, you're looking at Vermont. You're you're right on the border. Okay. Now this Mount Cabot at the at the base of this where you park is the New Hampshire Fish and Game Fish Hatchery, where they do all their fish spawning, free food for wildlife. If you know what I mean. Oh yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> now this area is thick, so thick of vegetation it looks like Vermont. Now if anyone has not been to Vermont. It's the uh, maple trees galore. Okay. Greenest, beautiful, beautiful area. I mean, when you are, you want to see green, if you can't go to Ireland, (laughs) go to Vermont. Right. It's gorgeous. Especially in the fall. Vermont is gorgeous for the fall foliage. It's like, it's, it's like the forest is on fire with oranges, yellows, reds. But this woman was doing a, a mountain hike, a sunset hike up to the cabin on Mount Cabin. There's a cabin you can stay in at the peak. I've never done it, obviously, because of what's happened to me. Alex has stayed in that thing, Petikoff. He stayed in that overnight, and he said, if you don't mind mice, <laughs> he's like, it's a great cabin to stay in because of the solitude. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So I, I, he's telling me this woman goes with her dog, a shepherd, a German shepherd like Chewy, okay. and off leash, and the dog was ahead of her. Now she's going up to this, this, this cabin to, to catch the sunset. Now, when she notices her dog stop and look at the tree line and it's growling, the dog is growling at the tree line. And this woman's like, you know, trying to recall her dog, dog won't move. All of a sudden this big creature comes out, grabs the dog. Now this woman goes in shock like fear your fear now her dog is yelping okay yelping with this with the thing with the creature has the thing in its arms i hate telling this story but it, it's because of what happened to us with those footsteps i gotta tell it the creature just snaps that dog's neck 
and walks off with it. And she called the cops. <laughs> she called the cops to tell them what happened. And of course, this is what the cops said. Oh, it's probably a bear. It's probably a bear. I was like, she told Evan what it was. You know, she's like a Sasquatch came out, grabbed my dog and broke its neck. Now she was hysterical. Okay. When I hear that, because I'm always hiking alone with my dog, I, I don't want anything bad to happen to my best buddy. You know what I mean? Like he has been on every hike with me. He is with me every day. You, it, it, you know, he, he's more, he's like my, he's like my son for crying out loud. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. I don't want anything bad to happen to my dog. So when those footsteps stopped, when we're on that trail, I got really scared. I got, I got really scared. I got scared for my dog. I was scared for me, but I was scared. I didn't want anything bad happen to my dog. So I go like this to the dog. I, go, I didn't want to make a huge noise because I wanted to, I wanted to see if I could see what was making those footsteps. I'm like, tss, tss. he looks at me and then stares right back to mm -hmm. where we heard that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like something big is there. Because like I said, if it was, if it was an animal, like I said, I heard the bipedal. There's a big difference between two, two steps and, and, and a four legged creature, you know, there's more, this was, it was clear as day. And because of the rain and it was muddy, you could really hear footsteps pretty good, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere. It's so quiet out there. You have none of that ambient now sound. So you could hear it. And clear as day. So I'm like, oh, my God. So as soon as I saw him look back, I went right over to a man. And I latched him up. I latched him up. I waited. I waited. Now, during this whole ordeal, like I said, this is the end of our hike. I didn't have my GoPro going. My GoPro was dead. It was raining. Oh, yeah. I was in that state where I didn't care. I'm at the end of the hike. It's raining. I feel like crap. My feet, my feet are beat from from these two long weekends of hiking. Like I had nothing left in the tank, nothing left. And I was like, oh my God. But it was that feeling. And this has happened to Alex and one of his buddies on one of his hikes. It's that feeling of being watched. Oh, abs, dude, I've been there so much. I know dude, exactly what you're talking about. Dude, I it's, know. It's, I know. The nightmare stands up. Oh, it's yeah. Almost, and it's almost like it's like. I felt like prey. It oh, must yeah. be what prey, like I think of a bunny rabbit, right? <laughs> and this, this maybe the big bad wolf is there. That instant, like that sixth, like that sixth sense. I think it's, we all we all have bad. them. We all yeah. have that, but we lose because of technology, we kind of lose our senses. Do you know what I mean? We rely uh -huh. too much on certain things. We, I think, person, I think we lose touch with that, and a lot of these outdoorsmen, a lot of these people that are out in the wilderness, a lot. I think they kind of their senses get heightened. So uh, I think of all the hiking we've been doing for all these years, I felt like someone was watching me during this whole thing. Like my my arm hair was raised. I had the goosebumps. My neck hair that tingling you get that tingling sensation over your body to where mm. like like i am being stalked or something is just watching me it's not moving it's not moving and i told people how thick vegetation is now a lot of people are gonna say why didn't this guy just go and walk in and see what it was right yeah you got to understand something when you're out in the wilderness and you're alone and you don't have a weapon my only weapon is a freaking six inch knife that isn't going to do much to any big animal without me having to get really close. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Fear comes over you. It's like a blanket. It just washes over you. I was scared for me. I was scared for my dog. I didn't want anything bad happening. But that freaking encounter that Evan tells me <sighs> is in my head at that moment. Well, it now. must have messed you up. I was so scared, Jeremiah. I'm like, I'm leashing up the dog and I'm getting out of here, man. It's bad. You know, with all that's happened to me, especially that night in the tent, like, I want to see it. I, I, I want to see it. 
but I don't want anything ruining my love of the wilderness. I don't want anything to ruin what I love to do. I love to go with my dog and I love to hike. I love to be alone out there and hike. I don't want anything bad happening. And that, that, that Mount Cabot encounter just sticks in my mind on every hike. Now when something Mm -hmm. weird goes on, I'm like, I don't want nothing happening to Chewy. I latched him up, man. Didn't do anything with the GoPro. I'm like, I am not changing the batteries. I am not doing what I did the week before and say, oh my God, this and this just happened. You know, I don't want to be that guy that just keeps puts out stuff, but doesn't get anything. You know what I mean? I don't want to, right. I don't need to do that. I did it already. I don't need to be like, you know, so probably for that 10 to 15 minutes, man. I just kept turning and looking behind me as I'm walking because I just had that feeling of being watched. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. and I know exactly where it happened, you know, and I, I haven't been back there since this happens. Um, been wanting to go back out there this year, you know, and Evan wants to go out there with me. So, um, little spoiler alert. Um, I know Alex, we're going to be planning a trip up, to northern New Hampshire to Coas County, home of the Wood Devil. Oh, and yeah, he, I've, man. Yeah. And we're going to yep. do a, he'll do a Beyond the Trail episode on Coas County and, and, and up there. And I, I, that's probably the last time I'll tell my encounter, you know, because okay. I've, I've on done that it. episode. Yeah. That'll be my last yeah, yeah. hurrah. Because oh, well. this, I told my wife today, I'm like, you know, this is probably the last live stream I'm going to do telling my story. You know, I've told it enough. Like mm-hmm. it's, there but i there comes a time when you know i've said it enough you know like it's it's ran its course for me like i've i finally come because for years man after that tent encounter i'm like man i'm like i wish i could have just opened up that tent and peeked my head out Uh but you gotta think like a lot of people probably say, why did this guy just open the tent after all that happens? Like, you don't, <laughs> when you hear something, you don't know what it is. And it's the middle of the night and you're with your family. I didn't want that thing coming back, man. Like, I didn't know what it was. I didn't want it coming back. But I finally come to terms with, I was so frozen in fear that night. I don't know. Like, like, like we were just talking about before with you had Martin Groves on recently. Right. Yeah. Yep. And man, I was listening to it today, actually, before this episode. And, and, and he's talking about the vocals Mm. and and word for word. It was like, I was telling it (laughs) like the same exact thing happened to him and his buddy. And I was like, Oh my God. Like the, the guttural growl. Right. He he heard that. Now, I don't know how loud it was for him. I, I, I would love to talk to him sometime about that, you know, because we share that connection. And I love talking to other people that have had a similar experience to me because, man, I have talked to probably six or seven people that have been like, yeah, like I have felt that vocal. Some people have heard it from like, oh, it was, it was, a, it was far away, but it was a stream. For me, it was the depth. It was the depth of it. It wasn't loud. It wasn't loud. It was just a, just a, a breath, like a, and then a, into a grunt. And then you just want to, and, but man, it vibrated me. It vibrated my ears. Like, oh my God, like to be able to share that with someone else who has had that is just like, I still get a rush when I heard it. Like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to talk to Jeremiah about this. And he just, he just heard it. The last week that, that is know? very weird yeah how uh, common it is now i have now to where i now i hear it and i'm like oh there's another one there's another one who that we share the same encounter so now after all that after going on alex's show after having the footsteps after the relief of getting out of that area because i didn't feel safe man until i got back to that franconia lincoln brook Uh it took me back onto that logging road that lincoln woods that that took me to the end and i was just a sense of relief but it was like oh my god i'm like this is such a hot zone now where we are in these ravines 
it's it's just it's it's brooks that flow for miles to me that's like a that's that's a wildlife highway oh, follow, absolutely. The water, follow the water on all these hikes i'm i'm going into this pemi you're following the brooks man you're following these intersecting brooks all the way for miles and miles so to 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 me power lines uh like brooks streams to me that's like a that's like a that's a sasquatch highway you know what i mean mm. so after all this this stuff has happened and you know i've told a couple of people and i've made some new friends about it um what me and evan wanted to do uh because his encounter uh, i'll go into it real briefly it's a quick encounter but it's it's why we you know mm. <laughs> friends um his happened in 2018 in november it was thanksgiving night 2018 he is driving on uh this road in central new hampshire and uh about i think it was a, a month prior he had lost his best friend in a car accident mm. uh, someone he grew up with so he was very depressed very emotional and he said what he would do uh, he, at night, he would just go for these rides uh, on, on the back roads of New Hampshire. And uh, this was a, a snowy night. Um, he's got his high beams on. Uh, a lot of these roads in New Hampshire are very windy dirt roads. Uh, so as he's coming around this bend, um, his lights, he thought it was um, reflectors on a tree because he's coming up on it and he sees the big amber light of uh, reflectors. And as he's getting closer, all of a sudden he sees an arm go up over his <laughs> eyes. He oh, sees wow. the hair on, on, on the tree, on, on the arm. And, and he sees the snow beads on the hair. Wow. You know what I mean? And he pulls up and his high beams are shining right on this thing. He stops his vehicle. And the thing is, probably is right in front of him, 15, 15 yards. He saw everything. I mean, he knew it was a male. That's how much he saw. Uh -huh. He saw everything. And this thing, we went when we went back to his to his encounter spot just this last year. It, it, it was about eight feet tall because you, okay. What's cool about he knew exactly where his encounter was is when the snow plows go by on these roads, they get so close to the trees. They leave divots from the plow hitting the tree. He knew exactly where the spot was because there's a big divot. So he said the creature looked at him when he stopped. The high beams are on this sucker. He's in a little Altima. He's in this small yeah. little. He said the thing could have flipped his car. Right. He's, yeah. It totally could have came yeah. over and he, it could have flipped my car yeah. over. His <laughs> He's like, it, let, it looked at him like with this look of disgust. And let out this puff. He probably thought it was probably like. I hear like that. Puff. I hear that so many times. You don't even know, Brian. I hear that same exact thing. Really? Sorry to interrupt you, but it's like. Oh no! I've heard it a solid four to five times in interviews where it's like, and it's like we heard this like this huff, like there was a disappointment or like disregard. Yes, it's like the weirdest the, thing he, that people bring up, dude. Was, he said it was like a parent looking at their child. Like, yeah, That's wrong. That fascinated me. Now, he said he saw the puff because it was so cold out. He saw the breath, the puff of, of air come out. And he said it just turned and walked away. And he was so effed up from that. He was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I just, wow. saw, a, I just saw a Sasquatch. He drove away, man. He drove away. But that, like, <laughs> knowing that just the way he tells his encounter and how much it like it affects him to like he doesn't want to stay out at night like mm. in camping he can't he has to stay in like a van if he's going to stay out like it, sure. it affects it affects a lot of people it affected me to where i you know i still can't camp alone you know what i mean until this a couple of weeks ago i was going to try it until chewy you know i was out with alex we're going out and to do an investigation out in alex's hot spot where mm -hmm. we started to go back to his the first Beyond the Trail episode was called Granite State Bigfoot. Exactly. That is Alex's, when the pandemic was going on, mm -hmm. he was going every day to this spot because there was nothing else to do. 
he would go out there, shoot guns, do whatever, go out there, research before he even knew about the guy that was having all the encounters out there. And Alex has had some, some weird stuff happen out there as well with some knocks. So he's like, Hey man, he's like, you want to go, you know, let's go back out to my, to that spot. And, uh, we'll go do a couple of investigations. It was actually the night that we were all on the phone that night. Um, oh, geez. Yeah. Don't <laughs> that night. I don't <laughs> listeners are going to have to just imagine. Uh, I'm going to even bring up Tate. That's <laughs> that's sorry, guys. You, you have to use your imagination of what. Yes. For okay, all those anyways, that, for, for anyone that knows Tate Hieronymus. Yeah. It, gotta love Tate. You're you gotta love Tate. You, you, there's no, you cannot not like him. You know, he's just a great guy. He's a great but dude. He is a funny guy. So hot tubs and PBRs. So we we're on. <laughs> so we're on that night. We Brian, were on wait, I gotta tell Brian. I'm sorry, I gotta tell yeah. you something. So this is how much like li, li, this lady <laughs> comes up to me at Monster Fest, and she's like, "Oh, I have to tell you, like you." Your show is, I love it. Keep doing it. This is amazing. I'm like, oh, this is great. Thank you so much. I'm getting this feedback. And then at the very end, this lady says, but what's the deal with Tate and all the PBRs? <laughs> and I'm like, that's the funniest thing because like, she's super, like, like she gets like the in joke. It, it somehow went through the, the waves and she latched onto it. And I'm like, uh, he just really likes PBRs a lot. That's all I could say, but. If we're I in a class, to throw that in. <laughs> let's say we're all in a class. Tate's the class clown. <laughs> yeah, no, in, in a good way, totally. Is, in yeah. a great yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. In a great way, yeah. Nothing but love for Tate. He knows. Yeah. He's just yeah. a great guy. But that's where we, we've we gone out a few times. And uh, just two weeks ago, he's like, hey, let me go back to our first overnight out there. We're walking the power lines. Okay. We're walking the power lines. It just rained a couple days prior. So we're looking for tracks and we're, we're going through the least path of resistance. Let's walk those power lines because those power lines go mm. through the state of New Hampshire. Oh, it, yeah. is, it is a highway for wildlife. So we're seeing all these different kinds of tracks. You know, we're picking up moose tracks here, you know, anything, deer tracks, everything, everything. So we come across this trackway, mm. three nice tracks, big pretty big size man uh alex did a 3d scan of it really oh yeah 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 yeah. really intriguing stuff we found that night we can't say for sure but the 3d scan he did on the phone that app you have with your phone and, mm -hmm. oh my god to see the impression down and it's just it's shaped like a it's a it's a someone had a big foot you know what i yeah, mean they were three of them yeah, so yeah. we caught three of them. So like, oh man, I'm like, we got to go back out here again and walk in and stay out of the power lines overnight with, with the therms, you know? So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yep. we had just planned, it was two Thursdays ago, two weeks ago. We're like, hey man, let's go out there and get them power lines before I leave for Alaska. I'm like, let's do it. Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we go out. Of course, I got Chewy because Chewy is our he is our sixth sense out there. Um, Alex, like Chewy loves Alex, and, and we always take him on our investigations. Um, a dog is a great tool to have because just because of how they how well their senses are. So five minutes into our investigation, we're trying to get we're walking through the thick stuff to the power lines, and uh, we see a couple porcupines scurry up the tree. Mm. I'm like, oh, so we're filming the porcupines. Of course, Chewie was the one that chased him up the tree. I have him off leash. He chased them up the tree. So mm. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, let's film this. And then I'll latch up Chewie because there's a lot of porcupines out. It's this, for some reason this year, there are a ton of porcupines up in the Northeast. Oh, um, weird. Yeah, a lot of them this year. A lot of roadkill just because there's so many. So I call Chewie. I'm like, hey, Chewie. All of a sudden I hear, like, I hear him yelp. And I'm like, oh. No. Oh man. I'm like, Chewy. Here comes Chewy. Quills in his nose, quills in his snout, quills oh, in his mouth. I'm that's like scary. Oh, I'm like, Chewy just got quilled. So we drove a hundred miles <laughs> to go for five minutes into the into the power lines, and Chewy gets quilled. I had to take him to the ER. But he's uh. he's 
you know, it was a long night, but he's fine now. But we didn't get to walk those power lines yet. So he's like, he's like, as soon as I get back, man, from the, from Alaska. Oh, so it still has to happen. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And that oh, night man. was the first night I was going to stay out in a tent by myself. Wow. So that was the night I was going to come over my fear of going out because he was going to stay out and do a night investigation him and his brother luca were going to stay out mm-hmm. and go home because alex only lives a half hour away from his hot spot mm-hmm. and i'm like okay man i'm like i'm going to stay out here so i'm like i'm ready i'm going to try it i got to see if i can do it he's like oh what a great idea he's like yeah man he's like you can say, anytime you want to go to my spot and stay go ahead but yeah i got ruined that night by the porcupine <laughs> so after 20 years i was ready to face my fear wow yeah and it just mother you know the porcupine didn't want me staying out that night so he 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 gave chewy some some quills <laughs> it's, it's so scary when it happens to your to your dog because oh, like dude. people need to i don't know if that everyone realizes how scary that is for a dog because it's like the quills keep going in and they yeah, have to at the vets to... they have to pull them out and it's really yep. traumatic it's got to oh, be yeah. traumatic for the dog and, and, and it's expensive <laughs> oh, it's very expensive totally it yeah it was an expensive night so <sighs> but yeah but you know, going back to, to Evan's encounter and, and what happened and him, after him seeing it, and, and, and that's a class that's like, doesn't get any better than that, you know, yeah. with the detail he had and, 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 and being able to go back there. And I said, well, hey, Evan, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm like, let's go to your encounter spot. Okay. And then let's go find mine because it's been when this happened oh, wow. last year. 19 years I haven't been back to that spot, man, in northern New Hampshire. Like I've hiked around that area, of course, but I have never been back to that campsite. For one, I forgot the name. It took me so long man. to find that campsite. And I used Google, I used the Google Earth to verify and pictures online of the campsites. I was like, oh my God. Just this past year, I'm like, oh my God, guys, I found it. Like I found it. Like we have to go back. So the plan for me and Evan was, oh, we'll go to your spot. I'm going to film you telling your story. And then we can go up to my spot and you can film me telling my encounter. Okay. You know? So we're like, hey, man, we'll go to your spot first, Evan, since it's only an hour away from where we are. Because mine was way up in northern New Hampshire and his was in central New Hampshire. It's a long ride. It was like a two, three hour ride for us to go to my spot across the state and up. <laughs> so we go to his spot. Okay. I get out of his van. I got the GoPro going and I'm like, Oh, I'm like, so this is, this is where it happened. Cause you can see the divot in the trees. Like, yeah, man, it happened right over there. As we're walking up to this, we see this weird impression, you know, Chewy came within, I say two inches of stepping right in the middle of it. And I was like, Oh yeah, man. He's like, I see that too. He starts looking down. He's like, dude, he's like, that's a track. And I'm like, Oh man. I'm like, no way. I'm like, this is five feet from the tree where he saw the thing four years ago. I was like, not saying it's the track from four years ago, but just saying it's in the right. same area where he right. had. And I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, that's interesting. Now, I'm always skeptical at first. I'm like, it was just a nice foot impression. Like, you could see the impression. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'll start looking behind it we see three more impressions in the, in the leaves, but pressed way down. Oh man. We're talking 16, 17 inches, three of them. And we're trying to step down, but we cannot get that depth. Now, Evan's a big guy. Evan's six, four, almost 300. He can. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a big guy. His foot dwarfed that foot impression. So like, Oh, that's interesting. So Evan's like, Hey, he's like, let's go across the road and see if we find any more. You know, we wanted to go in the direction where the foot, where the, where it was coming from. So mm-hmm. we had the, you know, like two crappy ones that we couldn't do anything with because of the leaves. Like it scrunched the leaves down and there was just that, that foot impression. But the one on the road, hard, we're talking a hard dirt road. It's not like no human can make that impression. You got to be a mm. heavy, heavy, heavy guy. So like, all right, let's walk across. 
I start to walk across. Now, Grant, I still have my GoPro going when we find this. Now, there are F-bombs. Well, I sent that one to you. I sent that to you as well, the link to you as right. well. Yeah. It's yeah. great. What's great about this, you're getting our reaction while it's happening. Like, Which it, is incredible. It was it, it, the odd, like, it, for, I'm just so used to when I get out and I start hiking, I'm going to, I just start filming. I see right across the road. I see this impression going up the embankment of this dirt embankment that goes into the woods. I beeline right to it. And I'm like, dude, he's like, dude, I'm like, dude, we had that dude, dude moment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Scott's pulling, there's a couple of leaves on it. Okay. He pulls the leaves off the, the top of it. He's like, I see toes. And I'm like, mm. I lost it. <laughs> like, we felt like we could see the toes. That's wild. It was wild, dude. It was so wild. I'm like, now I'm not, because I am in this state of jubilation, I'm not paying attention to Chewy. He mm. is whining. You'll see it. You can see it in the video. He is yelping and whining. Like, he doesn't do that. It's not a normal thing. He sensed something, whether he could smell whatever, I don't, but his reaction was just crying and whining for so long. And I didn't pick him on, pick up it until after when I watched the footage. I was like, oh, wow, Chewie's acting weird. But we're like, we got to call Alex. We mm. had, Evan had like this three pound bag of, of, of like quick mix plastic. Okay. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, that's not enough, man, if we want to get all these. So our first thing is we got to call Alex. We got to call Alex. He'll know what to do. He'll know what to do. So we call and call and call. No answer. We're like, he could be anywhere. Mm. He could be anywhere filming. Right. Yeah. He calls back like probably 20 minutes later and, he, and we tell him what's going on. And what's great is we have it all on, on film. And we're like, dude, we found a track. Like we found a passable track way. He's like, no way. He's like, hey, listen, it's going to take me two hours to get there where you go from where I, where he is to, to, to the location. He's like, I'm going to stop by home Depot. I'm going to get a big 50 pound bag of, of plaster. He's like, I'll wow. be there. two and a half hours, dude. And that two and a half hours. Okay. It was like a movie. Okay. Now when we found these tracks, no one, no one drove by, not a person walked by nothing. We are right. We are probably, probably about two miles, three miles from the state park. Port Tuckaway State Park. Okay. Yeah. Port Tuckaway State Park is is now we know is a hot zone for activity. Um so I'm like, you know what, Evan? I'm gonna go down because where we found the first set of tracks at the bottom of the hill, there is a huge pond, like a huge, huge pond. I'm like, I'm gonna see if I find any more tracks. I go down there, I find piles of turkey feathers really turkey feathers, turkey feathers ripped i mean ripped in half piles here and there turkey fe- i'm like evan i'm like this turkey feathers everywhere man he's like no i'm like dude i'm like they are everywhere i'm like, uh, like i'm still rolling i'm still rolling with the gopro getting it all and i'm like oh yeah man i'm like something killed something down here so I'm looking around down there for tracks. I didn't, I couldn't find any more tracks because it was so much leaf down there. It was very hard to find tracks. But while I'm down there, Evan yells, truck. I <laughs> oh, no. Here comes this truck, man, backing up with a, oh, with a boat geez. attached, going right towards the track. <laughs> and like, what do you do? You're like, no, I man, run. you can't. Dude, I run up. Evan is standing there like a dick. He isn't moving. He's like, I'm not moving. <laughs> so these guys are pulling up on their boat. They had to stop. They had to stop because they weren't going any further. Evan just standing there, man. I run up, man. I stand right on the side of Evan. I got Chewy, like, I got him so tight to me so he won't step on the track. Like, yeah. And these oh, guys are like, they're probably looking at us like, what are these guys doing? Yeah. They're not moving. Like these guys are taking the boat off the trailer. It's like a little, like ten, just a little boat. They could take it to the pond and do their fishing. We didn't move. It was to the point where the boat almost hit me when they took it off the trailer. Oh, man. 
dude, I'm not moving for you, buddy. Like, like there almost comes a time, like, are we going to have to tell these guys? Like, did you say, did you say, Hey, I got a big, like you just didn't even broach it. It came so close to say, Hey buddy, we got a potential Sasquatch footprint here. Would you mind going around, you know, but we didn't move. We did not move. Until the guy, we, we said to the guy, he's like, hey, when you get into the water, we have our buddy on a kayak. Could you let him know that we're here waiting for him? We wanted, it was like the only thing we could think of. Like Evan thought of that. Like just when you see our buddy in the pond, could you tell him that we're up here waiting for him? Like we've been here a while. Like we were just playing dumb. You know what right. I mean? didn't want to tell them. I didn't want to get that look or like, you know, didn't yeah. want anyone else to know what we're doing. So they go out. La di da di da. It's been about an hour and a half. We're still waiting for Alex, man. And we're like, oh, the nerves of God. Like I, uh, the adrenaline and the nerves. All of a sudden, okay, here comes this guy walking his dog on the other side with a toe where we got the good one on the embankment. That good trackway, just oh, man. that beautiful one with the toe impressions. Like he's going right towards it. <laughs> <laughs> well, his dog starts barking and lunging at my dog. We are across the road. Oh, the no. Track. Here comes this dude. He, his dog came within probably two, three inches of stepping right into the track. It was oh, like a boy. movie. And I couldn't believe what was going on all at once. Like You couldn't write a better script. You know what I mean? And that guy has no idea what's going he has on. no idea. Yeah. And And – after that, we put a backpack near it. <laughs> you yeah, know what I good mean? Good idea. People away from it. <laughs> but finally, Alex rolls up. And of course, Alex, of course, he was, of course, skeptical before he even saw anything. You know what right. I mean? All these guys, you know, what are the odds of these guys finding this where Evan had his encounter? And then he looks at him and he's like, this is pretty crazy, man. He's like, this is pretty, and it takes a mm-hmm. lot to get something like that out of Alex. No, no, it does. It really does. The yeah. One good thing about Alex, he doesn't have Bigfoot on the brain when he goes out there. You know, he's always skeptical of everything first. Yep. But when he starts saying, hey, man, when he starts swearing, he's like, this is pretty interesting, man. He's like, this is pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, but the one on the embankment, he's like, guys, He's like, I don't think I could do this. Like, I've never, I've never cast it up on an on an on an angle like that. Oh wow, yeah. He's like, you mind if I call Cliff Barackman? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, give me some pointers. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You can call Cliff. Yeah, why yeah. not? So here I am with the GoPro right next to his phone. <laughs> he calls up Cliff. Cliff answers. He answers after a few rings. He's like, oh, hey, Cliff, sorry to bother you, man, but I kind of got I got a potential trackway here in New Hampshire. We're trying to, you know, cast on an embankment and just hearing Cliff's voice, you know, because I was that guy from Finding Bigfoot and I always loved Cliff and Bobo. You know what I mean? So to, to, to get the pointers from him and what to do, it was just, oh, what a great experience, man. It was just so cool to, to be able to cast the, the, the tracks and, and that track way was the last one we cast out of all of them. Wow. And while Alex is casting it, he's running out of mix. <laughs> he's running out of mix. He's got about, he still has to get the toes. I'm there. Oh, man. I'm, I am so mad. I, <laughs> I am glad he showed up, but I am so mad that he didn't mix enough. He starts scraping it out with his hands to get every little bit he could, man. But <laughs> He ended up getting, we ended up getting the track. We got the, we got the toes. Alex, I, Alex has the cast. He's got it nice set up in his house and a nice glass case. It's just a nice memento to everything that happened. And he's like, Hey guys, he's like, would you guys want to come back up here? Like in a week or two and do an investigation. I'm like, mm. oh, yeah, man, like definitely. And that led into, doing a beyond the trail episode on the track way and it was exactly just so fun having eli come down and and uh 
Carrick St. Laurent came down. Oh, Carrick's so nice. He's a, he's he a really a cool guy. guy. Yeah, man. And we yeah. had, we, it, it, you know, it rains, you know, during, it rained both days. We did our investigation, but we had the night time to where it didn't rain. It got to go out and we had some stuff go on. <clears throat> Um, but we're thinking it like we heard a bloop, bloop splash, like very loud bloop, bloop splash. And it was just, you know, we come to the fact that it was probably beaver tail. It was probably beavers doing that. Right. But what happened on that second night, it was probably two, two thirty in the morning. Evan and Eli were by themselves on the power lines and we were over by the, uh, there's a side trail. You can go down you can parallel each other. One on the, you know, we got one group there and another group here and see if we can either flush anything out or whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> on the walkie talkie, they're like, are you guys, uh, Evan and Eli are like, are you guys over near the entrance? Because we're seeing, uh, a light. And we're like, no, man, we're way down. We're way down, man. None of us have lights on. He's like, they saw like a possible orb. Like they had something funky oh, wow. to where Eli, they were trying to recreate it with the flashlights. We all met up after that. We're trying to recreate with and like, no, like that's not it, man. So something weird happened that those guys, Evan and Eli saw that they, they can't explain it, but they're like, yeah, it was like this white light floating across and went behind the, there was this sign. It was the sign to the entry of, of the trail. And they're like, and then it was gone. I was like, oh, wow, that's that's interesting because I wasn't a big orb guy. You know what I mean? But you hear a lot of stories of people seeing orbs in the woods sometimes. So they saw something odd. They talked about it a little on the documentary, but there was nothing we could recreate. But it was just it's just a very interesting area. And, you know, like I said, that where we found that trackway, uh, uh, a half mile down the road was the power lines. Mm. Those power lines that run for miles. And that thing that that direction, the prints that that, where it was going, you go through the woods and then a little bit after those woods, you come up onto the power lines. So like, oh, wow. Like what a great area. But man, what a, it was such a great experience. You know what I mean? To be able to go out with those guys and, and see how they do their thing. It's um, yeah, that kind of thing is really cool. You, I learned so much from Alex every time we go out. Like he's like, "Oh, these are where porcupines burrow," and sure enough, we go up to this spot and there's a bunch of porcupine scat. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like every time I'm with that guy, like I always learn something. So it's 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 a, he is such a very down to earth, just a nice. I have never met a nicer person than Alex Petikoff. I, I can't like what you see on film is how he is all the time yeah 100 percent. it's it's the same thing like people need genuine. to realize that it's it's, it's not a it's not a fake not thing a fake, like that it's is not a fake facade. that's him he, yeah you, he with you get with you get with him mm -hmm. he, he is the same all the time such a nice nice guy yeah what a nice what a nice guy but yeah man that was that was you know that's that's what's happened to me out there though with the knocks and, and those those footsteps that's but, that's wild. I have, there's one question I have about the initial tent situation. Absolutely. And I know this is, this is like 20 years ago or more, right? It's a long time ago, but the one thing that I kept coming to mind when you were telling me that is, um, so you're inside the tent and you can yes. see something running, a, you know, across it, the nylon right yes at first i heard i'm like what is that now you yeah. gotta say, this is seconds now like i said we were in a big tent so mm -hmm. it had to go across far because like i'm saying three of us fit on one half of the tent and the other half was like all our clothes all our stuff you know what right. i mean so i had enough time to hear it and then i picked up the impression now you see me going like like this all the yeah. time i'm telling it Right. That's what I saw. Is the so digits. that's that's the question I had is, did you see actual digits. fingers? Yes. I saw oh my big goodness, Brian. ass fingers. How big? I mean, this is oh. what got me. Because okay. like I said, at first I thought it was a person because I saw the finger impressions. 
It's when everything changed. Oh, wow. At the end of the tent, it didn't growl. It didn't take the breath and growl and grunt until after the impression went across. It was about eight feet away when I felt that grunt. Okay. Eight, eight to 10 feet away from going from my right to left. And then it was my girlfriend and my son on the outside of the tent, the direction it was going. That's what scared me. I didn't want it coming back to my son's side of the tent. Yeah. I laid there still. I, I wow. don't know how long it was till I actually friggin' moved. But my first movement was looking to my left and seeing if it woke up my girlfriend. And she sound asleep. And I was like, oh, and I waited, dude. I laid there and waited hands like this, dude, pillow over my head. My and I just waited to hear if I would hear anything else because I didn't know, like take Sasquatch out of the realm. I didn't know what it was. So I've come, like I was saying before, I have finally, after years of fighting myself saying, Brian, like, dude, why couldn't you open that tent? I was so afraid. I couldn't freaking move, man. I physically couldn't move after that grunt because it's something I have never heard. Besides, if you go to the circus and you're close to a lion and you can hear, you can, you know, they give off like that vibration. Right. Exactly. No lions in the north. There's no lions up there going on. Yeah. There. Yeah. Going it was the digits. That's why when I said bear at first, I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm like, a bear ripped through my tent. A bear's not going to go up on its hind legs, miss the, you have a cover on your tent and the strings come out into the ground, miss those, have the intelligence to miss those. Okay. Right. Now trip over them. Wow. And, 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 that's, that's wild. So you could see the actual fingers. Uh, you could probably, could you tell like how big the yeah. hand ish was it, or? It, yes. Yes. Because yeah. they were so fat. They were so fat. Like the, impre- and it wasn't like it was grazing gently, man. Right. <laughs> okay. Enough. It was like Pushing, pressing in. Wow. Pressed and across. <laughs> I'm not going to say violently, but yeah. aggressively, very aggressive to where it scared me. I'm up on my elbows watching that sucker go across, about to get get up and and, and think, I'm thinking of the noises right. I was gonna have to make to get out of my sleeping bag with the zippers. Yeah. To then to unzip that big dome freak and pop my head out into the pitch black, man. No way. No Dude, way. Dude, yeah, I would have it would have been say I mean, I would have made the same call. Like there's there's no way. Like and it, there's no way I would have been able to do that. And here's another thing. And I, I, and I've talked about this with, you know, I've heard a guy that it took him 55 years to wow. tell his owner. This guy's 72. Okay. Goodness. It took him 55 years. And it, I, what I share with him is that it felt like it just happened yesterday. Mm. When you said, Oh, it's been 20 years. I don't know if you, I can remember it. Like it just happens. Wow. Like it's, it never leaves you. So in, in, in a way I feel like I'm cursed, mm. but I also feel lucky because that doesn't happen to a lot of people, but that those years of not knowing, but to be able to tell my story, like it just happened yesterday, man, right? it is so fresh in my brain. Yeah. It's never going to leave me. Never. Like I, I will never forget that night. I will never forget it. it it's something that, you know, I, I've shared it enough. Um, but man, yeah, I, I, my memory is as clear as day when it comes to that night, man. Wow. And, and it's, 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 it's definitely, uh, it's definitely an experience. <clears throat> you know? Brian, that's, that's in that whole, that whole I mean, it's it's a whole adventure, your whole story, and, and thank My you for journey. sharing with. It's, yeah, it's a twenty years. It's, year it's amazing, journey. man. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that. Uh, I would highly recommend people, listeners, to subscribe to Brian's channel so that you can follow along with everything he's posting. And he's, there's some really cool stuff on there. There's going to be plenty of links in the the show notes, but. Do you mind spending a few minutes, uh, Brian, to to share 
uh, just any way that people can keep up to date uh, with what sure. you're doing. Uh, I post all my hikes, um, okay. all my investigations. I, I've just posted, a, I think the last two months, all I've been doing is going on investigations wow. uh, with Alex and stuff, but I posted them. We've gone to the Freetown State Forest. That's a whole nother episode, man. Yeah. I live 15 minutes from there. I am 15 minutes from the Freetown State Forest. So wow. I, I, I took, I, um, I've gone in there with Alex three times. Um, we've taken a guy that wanted to, you know, cause there's a lot of, right. It's a melting pot of everything in the Freetown State Forest from, weird mur stuff. from murders, cults, yeah. ghosts, anything you are into Sasquatch encounters. It is. That's part of the Bridgewater Triangle. Absolutely. So that is a whole nother episode, man. <laughs> no, it where, really is. It, yeah. I mean, that is just, that's a wild, wild stuff, dude. Wow. But what's great about that is we go to all these famous locations and I have it all on my channel, but my channel is Brian and Chewy go hiking. That's all it is. And I'm a small channel. I'm not, I don't promote my channel. You know, I started my channel when my dad, we you know for mm. my dad, my dad lived in Arizona. He was a hiker. I lived over here. I'm a hiker. I would share my videos so he could see them. Oh, that's really you know cool. I mean? Yeah. So that's that was awesome. my whole, you know, that was my whole start to this YouTube thing was so I could share my stories with my dad. Little did I know, you know, other people like watching, you know, hikes oh, and getting yeah. information on, on mountains and hikes. And that's, that's mostly what I do. But I, lately I have been putting the investigations in there and it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, I enjoy doing it and I enjoy sharing <laughs> where these locations are just to, so people can see mm. what I'm talking about. Cause to, to, that's the most important thing to me. I want these people to go on Google earth after this episode, look up where I've been talking about. And you're going to be like, Oh wow. That's oh, yeah. a forest. And there's no cars going in there. There's no roads. So that's where these suck to me. My opinion in these deep areas in the whites, these are where these things are hiding. Is, is where people don't go because you, like we were saying, you go off trail a little bit and you lose your way nine times out of 10, you're not going to find your way out. Man. Oh no, you're, you're not, you're not dude. So yeah, I, that's in my opinion, that's where these suckers are is where people aren't going to go much. And that's where I want to try and go, but I'm not going alone. So <laughs> hopefully, uh, Next, next, beyond the trail at the end of the summer, you guys will see us going up to northern New Hampshire and oh, going yeah. to the I, wood I, <laughs> I can't wait for that one because we used to go up to uh Colebrook and Pittsburgh and all that good stuff. Northern New Hampshire, northern New yeah. Hampshire is beautiful, but I can't oh, wait to see what you guys gorgeous, find up there. Like yeah, the Dixville Notch area. Oh, yeah. Oh totally. my God. You'll see a moose. We saw seven moose on uh, one of our, me and Evan went on an excursion to do an investigation. Way no doubt. I got a quick story if we got time. We got a little bit of time. So I got, to, how about this? Let's, let's, let's finish, let's finish the episode. And then I can I've tell got, you, I've got moose stories Great. and you've got moose stories and we'll oh. do like a, a Patreon moose Moose Let's do special. that dude, because I have a great <laughs> if you have story. the time. So I have, I have the right. time. Man. Let's, let's close it out real quick. Okay. So All right. Brian, thank can you for, for chilling know? out. Can it's I just been, say one can yes. I say something? I, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you. Go, go, go. I just want to thank you, okay? Mm. Because people like me that have had a hard time talking about it to just the average Joe, mm -hmm. what you do with this platform, I like it, it's so much appreciated. Thank you. People that have had encounters yeah. and are afraid to talk about it or just are afraid to step forward. This platform is, is a great platform to let people like us tell what's happened and not get that look, not get that look of like, Oh, look at like a uh, Latin nut. Like, Oh, this, this guy's a nut. You know what I mean? Like you've heard enough of it. The listeners have heard enough that they know that, you know, I'm not, I'm just right. telling you what's happened to me on my hikes and, 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 and the areas I, I have gone to that are, that are 
hot zones. So, and I, I, for me, bringing awareness to the Northeast, because you don't hear a lot about the Northeast much. Oh, you, you don't. People don't really chat about it. So I, I super appreciate it because that is the main focus of my channel now is to give people a platform to share their encounters where they haven't been able to share because they've been maybe afraid or not uh, empowered. And so then other people hear that and then they have are able to connect dots in their heads or in their head or have the uh, courage then to come forward. But can you speak to the listener t for a moment? Like imagine you're speaking to a person that has had something happen. They haven't come forward yet. And why is it a good idea to, you know, contact someone like me and just what does that do to you as a person? You know why? Because for me, and and I'm sure for some other people, some people hold on to this for a long time. And it and like I said, it, it is a heavy weight to carry on your shoulders if you don't know what's going on and you're looking for answers and you come to a platform like this and you're hearing similar stuff. The best thing for me was telling my story mm -hmm. of what's happened because that weight came off of me and and to get that positive feedback and and i'm calling it like a family you 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 get to like you can trust people that you're telling your story to on this platform it, it's just i i highly recommend anyone that has had an encounter and and is having a hard time telling anyone this is one of the safe places to to tell it and 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 you will feel much better getting that off your shoulders because for me, I had it for 18 years. Wow. Carried that to myself. Yeah. And and I am so glad I did because I don't know where I'd be if I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I, I feel so much better hearing similar encounters and just you get that validation. When you hear someone else have something similar, and you're like, "Yeah, I wasn't imagining that." Like, it, it happens to other people. So, yeah, uh, the best thing to do is to share your story in a safe platform. You know, yes, not I, I, exactly. Thank you, Brian. And if you want to contact me directly, listeners, you can uh, send me an email. Bigfoot Society at gmail dot com is the easiest way to do that. But, Brian, thank you so much for for hanging out. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. All right, I'm going to use this space uh, this week to announce that I'll be at the Sasquatch Summerfest in Oak Ridge, Oregon as an attender. I won't be presenting or anything, but I'll be hanging out trying to interview people that have had Bigfoot encounters. If you're from the Oak Ridge, Oregon area or surrounding and you've had a Bigfoot experience, please contact me directly, bigfootsociety at gmail.com. Also, Priscilla was nice enough that if you get your tickets through SasquatchSummerfest.com and use code Bigfoot Society, you can get 50% off the cost of your tickets, which is a big amount. So uh, code Bigfoot Society to get 50% off your tickets, SasquatchSummerfest.com, and uh, helps out the podcast as well. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. Here at Bigfoot Society, we're headed to the moon, and here's a current update about going full-time. So here we go. As of 522, we are now at 202 patrons out of 824 needed. That's 24.51%, almost a quarter of the way there, guys. Brings us down to 622 left to join the Patreon. So a huge thank you to Barbara, Gregory, Dana, Craig, Jeff, Steve, Ricky D, Norm, Megan, Dan, Daddy, Chatty, Joe, Eber, Ike, Jules, Josh, Ryan, Todd, Nathan, Gabe, Bill, Lucky, Megan, William, Bobby, Joe, and Inger for joining recently. If you want to join in the fun, 
you can join over at patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I'll see you there. And again, thanks for listening. I can get on here and we can tell our stories. Maybe there's somebody else out there listening that's too afraid to tell their story. Maybe this will give them the courage to come out and not feel so bad about it. Who cares what anybody thinks? I know what I saw. I know what's out there. That's all I care about. let people know. Please let them know. If you ever see one of these things, you need to tell. Because if you don't, then shame on you. You know? Shame on you. Wait, there's more. Monster Fest 2 is coming up soon in beautiful Canton, Ohio, and I will be there doing a live podcast. If you've ever wanted to meet Bigfoot Society in person, this is the year to do it. My special guest in the live podcast episode will be Justin from Cryptids of the Corn. You will not want to miss this live episode. And then you can hang out with me at Monster Fest. You can go to smalltownmonsters.com to get your tickets. Presale tickets are $20.50, and tickets at the door will be $25. But kids 12 and under are free. How many places can you go to where kids 12 and under are free? Not many. New this year are the live workshops. I'm excited about this. Extremely excited. How to cast a footprint. How to collect DNA in the woods. Ghost hunting tools 101. Uh, how to do research. Also, there's going to be food trucks outside this year and new guests, new speakers, people you won't... I mean, the coolest thing about last year is that I got to meet people I was not expecting to be there. People like Les O'Dell, John Hickenbottom, uh, really cool big put people that I never would have thought that I would have met before and uh, Seth Breedlove made it happen by making this incredible place for the community to get together monster fest in Canton, ohio june 28th through 29th guys do not miss this year if you missed last year don't miss this year head on over right now to smalltownmonsters.com i hope to see you there